Hi, we're Britt and Mike, and this is Leah. We're converting our 2021 Ford Transit van into a home on wheels, and in this week's video, we're starting on our freshwater plumbing system. What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and back to our van build series. This week we will be working on our plumbing for the van. We have a 40 gallon freshwater tank on delivery right now. Uh, it should be here in the next couple days. And in the meantime, we've already received a few components. We have our 45 PSI uh, water pump by USA Adventure Gear, as well as our accumulator by SureFlow. And uh, if you're not familiar, the accumulator just kind of keeps the water pressure at a constant so that you don't get like sporadic water coming out of your uh, faucets when you're using them. And then right here behind me, we have our Bosch four gallon uh, instant hot water heater. I am pretty excited about that. It is 120 volt. I played with the idea of going with propane just for efficiency, but I didn't like that the propane uh, hot water heaters put off gas, which can be dangerous, especially in a small space. I've also seen some horror stories on uh, Amazon and some other places online of those particular kinds of water heaters catching fire. And I'm not really not interested in putting some, something like that in our van. So we decided to go electric and I think it should work pretty well. And Bosch has three different sizes of these water heaters. They have a two and a half gallon, this is the four gallon, and then they also have an eight gallon. The eight gallon is pretty big. Don't remember the dimensions off the top of my head, but I just didn't want to put something that big in the van. The two and a half gallon seemed kind of small, so I kind of went with a happy medium with the four gallon. And the other benefit of the smaller ones, the four and the two and a half, is they are just a standard outlet. So I will need to wire in an outlet. I've already ran the the wire and have a breaker for it in the van. So I just need to run the outlet to the corner where it'll be plugged in at. The eight gallon water tank does need to be hardwired. So unfortunately you can't just wire it up to an outlet. So this is the area where I am going to mount everything for the uh, water system. It's just across from our electrical underneath the garage. Our tank should fill the space between the wheel well and the front here pretty, pretty close. And then uh, right above the tank, I'm gonna mount a sheet of plywood that goes across. And that's where I will mount the accumulator and the pump. I'm thinking that the hot water heater can either mount to the front, similar to the way that I have the inverter mounted over here. Just kind of mount it to the front up here. Or I might build some kind of a box or something to mount it to the back side of the water tank itself. I haven't decided which is the best option just yet. But yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking at for now. We'll have water lines that run through both sides of the van. Uh, I'll have to be very diligent with the way that I run them on this side, considering that all my electrical's up here. And uh, yeah, just do my best to not get too close to anything. This is the sheet of plywood. I'm going to mount the uh, water pump and accumulator too. I've already marked out my holes so that when I go to mount these, it'll be pretty seamless. And then I do need to notch out both corners because I do have some wiring and stuff going on up underneath the bed that could interfere with uh, the plywood in those corners. So just gonna go ahead and cut that out and then we'll be good and ready to go to mount this thing. Just something interesting about the accumulator is it has these like rubber bushings here where the mounting hardware goes through. And I assume that's to cut down on vibration. On the water pump, it's kind of a like a soft plastic, but I am also considering getting some rubber washers. I might actually even have a couple. Getting some rubber washers and mounting to the feet of this as well so that when the water pump is on and vibrating a little bit, maybe I can cut down on some noise and vibration that way. What's up everyone? It's a new day. It's actually almost 3 o'clock. I'm talking kind of funny because I went to the dentist at about 9 a.m. and didn't get out until after 1. So it's a bit of a lost day. I'm not going to really get a whole lot done today, but I am going to go ahead and knock out a few things. Uh, first of all, I need to mount an outlet for the hot water heater 
And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and mount the uh, water pump and the accumulator to the side of the van on the inside. And then if I have time, I'm gonna build a platform to put the hot water heater on. I had some different ideas about how to mount the hot water heater. After some careful consideration yesterday, I realized I kind of needed to mount it where it's facing into the center of the van. So I'll have to rotate it and I don't really have a spot on the wall there to put it. So I think I'm gonna build it up, build up a little platform and probably use straps or something to hold it down to the platform and I think that's probably the best way to do it. The reason being that I need to be able to access the control knobs on the front of the hot water heater. <laughs> so when I was doing all this math in my head and stuff, I wasn't really accounting for that. So that's the plan for now. Uh, let's see what we can get done today. All right, guys, I apologize for the noise. It is uh, 100 degrees outside, so I've got the air conditioner going. I've got all the covers in the windows, and I'm currently in my Harry Potter bedroom underneath the bed. You can see here that I've already put this uh, outlet box in here. Here's the wire that I ran previously and I've gone ahead and taken a few minutes to strip and prep the wire for my outlet and I'm using these uh, port connectors here just to give it a nice, uh, just like a really nice connection and I will be using a GFCI outlet. Uh, I think that's a good idea to put uh, GFCI on all of your runs just in case anything happens uh, something gets wet or something it won't fry your wiring <laughs> so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and connect this guy up and then we'll get to test it out and make sure that we have 120 volt power okay so I've got it wired up now when I turn on the inverter that little light on the front should turn on Let's test it out and make sure it's at 120 volts and then we should be good. Perfect. All right guys, fast forward a little bit. It's actually the next morning. Before I left yesterday, I went ahead and installed the water pump and the accumulator right here above where the tank is gonna go. I think it looks good. I think it's gonna work uh, in that area. The only thing is I kind of messed up on the height that I mounted them. <laughs> Uh, the water tank is going to be 18 inches tall because I'm going to turn it on its side so it'll come out 13 inches from the wall, 18 inches tall. And I have this mounted about 17 and a half inches. So that's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is slide both the water pump and the accumulator up even though the accumulator is technically fine. Um, that way the lines will line up perfectly so that when I go to attach them I don't have to like bend or twist on the lines or anything to get them to connect to one another. So. That should only take a few minutes to pop those down, make some new pilot holes, and put them back up. No big deal there. I think I'm going to take the opportunity as well to uh, put some washers on the front of the screws for the accumulator. Um, because they do go through these like rubber grommets. And I've noticed that if I tighten it up too tight, it'll pull through into the grommet. So I don't want them to pull through those grommets later on down the road and uh, cause issues with it coming detached from the wall or something like that. Also, I expect, you know, the pump and stuff to cause vibrations and that could also cause the screws to pop into the grommets. So I think the washer is probably the best way to go with that. And then right up here in the corner, that's where I mounted that outlet to the top there. That is where I'm gonna install the uh, hot water tank. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a little platform right above where the wheel well goes right there and tuck the back of the hot water tank into that corner. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to work around. There's this uh, gray cable that comes in from the, uh, the alternator for charging purposes. I've got that. I've got this black wiring harness uh, for the heated floor and uh, obviously the wheel well. So I gotta work around all that stuff. As Oh, and there's also this pillar for the bed that comes out about an obviously an inch and a half because it's a two by four. Anyways, I need to work around all that stuff to be able to mount the uh, hot water heater here as nice and snug as I can in that corner so we're not taking up any extra space. Technically this is supposed to be mounted to a wall. It has like a little cleat system. You put some screws in your wall, set it in it, and it sits in place. I think if I put a platform in there and just strap it in really good, it'll be just as good. It'll stay in place and won't have any issues with it. So that's the plan. see right here behind me I've got the uh, water heater kind of put into place the shelf is built and just kind of soft fitted in there we just got the water tank in a couple hours ago so now you can kind of see where that's gonna fit in there 
and uh, yeah, this is kind of how I want everything to go together. What's up guys? It's a new day. It's actually been two days. I filmed a little bit yesterday, but I'm worried that, that footage is borderline unusable due to the sound quality from the local landscaping. So let me catch you up on what I've got done so far. Say hi to Brick, guys. Hi. <laughs> what are we doing today? Plumbing. <laughs> And lots of it. <laughs> so uh, let me catch you guys up real quick on what I got done yesterday. Since, like I said, I'm worried that that footage is trash and not really usable <laughs> for this. So. <laughs> There's nothing a video editor likes to hear more than that all the footage you took was trash. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault. I, uh, well, I will be sorting through all the trash. <laughs> part of it, to be fair, part of it is my fault. I didn't really. No. I didn't really film much yesterday and then before I left I thought oh I'll film a recap I turn on the camera for the first time all day and the neighbor starts trimming the hedges okay so as you can see I've got a lot of little fittings and stuff going on over here uh, but I've got all the ones on the front of the tank uh, minus the uh, hose for the inlet for the water but I've got my drain line down here with a ball valve on it and then right on the front, we've got a little connection so we can just hook a garden hose up to that. I didn't see a need to drill a hole out of the bottom of the van since it's right here at the back of the van anyways. Just make it accessible and if we ever want to drain it, we can just hook a hose up to it and drain it out the back of the van. I've got the uh, water outlet down here. This is where the water will come out through the pump. I haven't hooked up this uh, PEX yet because I want to be able to pull this tank out if I need to, which I definitely will. Uh, but it comes up, goes over, goes through the pump, goes through the accumulator. And then right over here, it splits off into three. One for the shower, one for the sink, and one for the hot water heater. I've got fittings on the top of the hot water heater over here as well, ready to be hooked up. But we are using all shark bite push connections. And I think it looks really nice so far. So yeah, yesterday was really just a lot of me uh, hooking up these little connections and measuring and cutting and affixing them and all that stuff and it's kind of boring honestly i used a lot of plumber's tape anywhere where i had threaded connections so on um, both sides of the pump and the accumulator as well as the top of the hot water heater and some of my connections down here on uh, my tank as well so hopefully when everything is finished and hooked together we don't have any leaks okay so i'm here underneath the bed uh, cutting some pecs and hooking things up and I just kind of wanted to give you a quick tutorial on how easy this stuff is to work with uh, the pecs that is and also the uh, shark bite fittings just so I can give you guys like a better idea of you know how this is going okay so I've already gone ahead and measured out this next piece that I'm gonna cut the way that I'm doing that is I'm measuring the distance between two connections from this little plastic outer piece here to the next one to the next little plastic outer piece so that's the length in between the pipes but also you have to account there's seven eighths inches of tubing that goes inside these fittings on each side so that measurement plus seven eighths on either side will get you your final length so i've cut this one out it is uh, 16 and three quarters inches and then you just need a pair of cutters I'm not sure what these cost because I didn't have to purchase these. We had these on hand here. Get yourself a nice clean cut. And then uh, just like when I did the other plumbing, how we had to chamfer, you need a tool to chamfer this one. This I believe was a few dollars. We priced them at Lowe's, we didn't have to buy them, but we priced them, they're, they're relatively inexpensive. And then it has each different size of hose on there. We are using half inch, so just put it in there and turn and it's just like a pencil sharpener it will give you a nice beveled edge on your pipes so that everything fits together really well you can do that on both sides and then literally you're gonna take this uh, same piece here push it all the way on and then use a marker to mark how far in that is because that's the exact same length that your shark bike fitting should go on. So you know that you're all the way on once you get to that mark. Do it on both sides. And now this is ready to install. And uh, just for demonstration purposes, 
I'm gonna use that same fitting that I was just using a moment ago to show you how they go together. And it's super easy. You literally just slide it on and push it together. Now you've got a super tight fitting. This will not come off just by pulling on it. It's not gonna fall off on the road or anything like that. It's, it's, it's on there tight. You need this little tool here if you wanna remove it. And then you pop that on, squeeze it down, and then you're able to pull it out. But yeah, the uh, Shark Bite moniker is very aptly named. These are very difficult to remove. They're difficult to remove by hand, like you have to give it some brute force, and they aren't gonna just pop off on the road. Turn the hot water the spout all the way around to this side, and then I'll be able to run my hot lines. Maybe one line down this way, and then I can split it down here on the bottom. Someone can go over here, and one goes straight. I think that's what I'll do. All right, guys, it has been a few days since the last clip, and basically what we've been doing is Mike has just been using that same technique over and over and over to run all of the lines throughout the van. So now he's gonna show you where he ran them. Yeah, it's been a lot of wash, rinse, repeat. <laughs> so. Okay, so I already showed you where the lines come up from the water tank up to the pump, up from the pump to the accumulator, back over to the hot water tank. It actually splits off into three. One goes to the shower, one goes to the sink, one goes to the hot water tank, and then from there, Hot water comes out, comes down underneath here and splits into two. One goes to the shower, one goes to the sink. So from the actual uh, living space, the lines come in through the bottom of the closet here, back in front of the wheel well, up around the back end of the wall and up to this uh, upper area here. And I have them stopped there for now. I'm not sure exactly how we're gonna finish those off. That'll be once we put in the, uh, the mixer for the shower. And then on the opposite side, our lines come across uh, just in front of the power equipment. I'll find a way to wrap those lines so that they'll be protected in the event of any kind of leaking. So I don't want any water spraying on our electrical. Uh, but there was really nowhere else to take it to get it over to this side. So it goes over in front of that, comes through the cabinetry underneath the oven, and then back along the back of our cabinets here to the sink, which will be all the way on the end. And then similar to the shower, I won't finish this uh, section off here until we get the sink installed and I know what line needs to go where, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, the end of this is unfinished, but everything else from there to the water tank is done. I think we're gonna go ahead and close the vlog out here. Uh, obviously we can't hook everything up and test everything just yet. We don't have a sink, we don't have a shower. So yeah, there's still some loose ends to tie up here, but we are effectively done roughing in all of our plumbing, and uh, it's pretty exciting. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.